what's going on guys it's Dan here and today we're gonna be taking a look at something a little bit different so I've mentioned this a little bit in the past but uh, I got addicted to a game called from the depths and uh, currently on screen right now is said game and the main objective of the game is to build various vehicles to use against AI and uh, use it in sort of a campaign setting so you would use it to sort of take over uh, the game world. Recently however they added in tanks so I've been kind of messing around with this a couple of the models are really bad um, we're gonna take a look at these right now and I'm gonna see if you guys are it interested in me doing some kind of campaign with these vehicles uh, I've just been doing some experimenting so I don't know exactly how well these are gonna fare in the campaign but we're gonna take a look at them right now so we're gonna go all the way over to the first vehicle on this list uh, technically speaking this one was the first one but this one t received some upgrades in the recent uh, past so uh, we're gonna put this one where it's supposed to be So this is the first real uh, tank we made. This is the OBK PZ1 26 3 centimeter two barrel. So what this stands for is this is the vehicle designation uh, the hull type and then the caliber of the gun and then uh, the number of barrels on said gun so, if I actually close that out, uh, it's a very simple tank. Uh, we've got some sloped armor for good uh, bounces, and uh, we got some tracks, armor. Uh, the turret is actually pretty strong. Uh, I'm going to hop on it real quick. So, as you can see, we've got a fully traversable turret. Two shots can fire. We've got uh, antenna in the back, mostly for just aesthetic appeal. Uh, we've got the two barrel, uh, 236 millimeter gauge guns, uh, range finders, stuff like that. The internals are something to behold. Uh, this took a long time to get all worked out, figure out what I needed. So the turret itself takes up the majority of the inside of the hull. It's not very good. Uh, turret design, but it gets the job done and in numbers these these tanks are Devastating ammunition is stored here in the back covered completely in uh, heavy armor We've got our secondary uh, view uh, Range finding equipment. So our radar um, Storage ammunition processors and up here in the front. We've just got a We've got two really really small engines and then just tons of armor in the front. This thing from the front is difficult to get through. And it's trying to drive away right now. No, you're not getting away from me. Uh, we're gonna put Weapons all of these just on, on, on so they don't drive away. Weapon only. Weapon only. Weapon only. Weapon only. There we go. Alright, so this guy, that is basically all the internals of this vehicle. Uh, it's interesting. Uh, so now we're gonna move on to the next one which is built on the same chassis, so the same hull. Only this time, when we carved out the internals, um, let me go ahead and open that up. Uh, our ammunition is in the front, all behind this uh, pretty thick armor. Uh, we have two uh, 200 horsepower engines, so pretty, pretty weak, but Good enough to get this thing moving up at about 30 meters a second. Uh, we've got more ammunition in the back, just because this is a missile carrier. So then we have the missile system, which for these we have just fragmentation warheads. So these things will uh, do a very good job of just punching through stuff. Very maneuverable and reasonably long range. Uh, so these things are going to be able to take down things pretty far away. And I've also set up the AI so, AI so this thing doesn't get very close in combat. So yeah, so this one is the uh, 
MCA, so motorized, um, I don't remember what that stands for, but uh, it all made sense when I was making this. So the PZ-1 hull uh, it has five seven meter rockets. So that's the designation for this vehicle. Next we have, I don't even need to get in all these. Uh, next we have the LAR, so long range artillery. Uh, PZ-1 hull, 148.3 centimeter one barrel artillery piece. This thing is designed to stay really far away and deliver a massive uh, 1,483 millimeter uh, shell. So this one, again, doesn't have a fully traversable turret just because the internals, uh, if I go ahead and just do this real quick, the internals are basically just all of this in the back uh, so we've got some explosive uh, material cartridge things and then we got some ammunition to make sure it loads faster and all this just feeds right up into the gun up here we have the ammunition and the ammunition processors and then packed tightly behind more crazy armor so next we have technically the first vehicle of all these. These three vehicles were based on the same chassis as this one, but uh, this one was updated more recently than the rest of these, so uh, we actually, I increased the barrel gauge of this one, just because I wanted this to be more of an assault tank. So this one is the PN. Uh, this initially was designated the Pensacola, so I just decided to rename it the PN. Uh, Panzer, so the Panzer, uh, that's what I'm naming these things. The, the PZ-1 hull, 50.0 centimeter, one barrel, uh, basically a salt tank. Uh, this one is very straightforward on the inside. We have all of the uh, ammunition loading stuff right up here in the front. These massive 500 millimeter shells uh, loaded up into three millimeter, I mean three meter uh, auto loaders. Uh, this thing has a tendency that if you can actually get through the front armor, which is very difficult, much like all of the PZ-1 hulls. Uh, it goes up in flames. And then in here we have two weedy little engines, uh, 200 horsepower in total. Uh, we have the AI, which is actually pretty extensive for this vehicle. And then we have the ammunition up here in the back, uh, all tucked away nice and neatly. So next we get on to the, uh, the much larger vehicles. This one is the LAT RT1 3PC. All right, so this vehicle is the large assault tank, uh, RT1 being the hull type. So this is the rat uh, hull type that, uh, I, that's just what I've designated it. And then it has uh, a three beam, uh, particle cannon so this thing is all about the damage if we look here the largest of the two beam the three beams does an average of oh about 100,000 damage while the other two do a respectable 20,000 25,000 damage and this is impact so basically uh, you have the options between piercing explosive shock EMP and impact impact Basically, it doesn't really penetrate anything, but whatever it hits just is vaporized uh, and it just carves giant chunks of the ship off immediately. Uh, piercing will just punch through stuff. Uh, it's, it's good if you just want to destroy internals, but this thing is good for just destroying everything. And then explosive shock isn't really that good. EMP, I've got missiles for that which I don't have fitted at this point, but I do plan on making a, a, an EMP rocket carriage at some point. So that's the main feature of this hull. Now this vehicle was based on the chassis of this one, but this one was updated more recently. Uh, this vehicle, if we just look at the internals real quick, this is actually kind of crazy. Uh, this vehicle from the front has probably about six, seven meters of just solid armor. Um, except these two holes right here, which nah, it's all right. Uh, we have just a crap ton of RTGs uh, inside of here to charge up the massive 
3,200 horsepower electric engine. And I've got three of these engines uh, tucked inside of the vehicle. And then we've got just your average fuel engines that are just scattered all over the place designed to keep the shields up and uh, supplement anything that the uh, electric engine can't handle. So we've got that. And then here at the back, we've got more RTGs. We've got repair tentacles, um, two more engines. On the underside, we have just a load of repair bots so that way this thing can repair itself pretty quickly. We've got double treads. Uh, this thing isn't as fast as the other one that we're about to look at, but this thing will probably do about 30 meters a second. Uh, the other vehicles we've all looked at so far do about 30 meters a second. Uh, but that's basically this machine. It's I haven't been able to really test it yet on the battlefield. I've just got some shields because I was running low on volume, so I just put some really crude shields over top of it to make sure that things weren't able to get through. And these shields are pretty strong. And it's designed to keep its front towards the enemy at all times, so hopefully I don't have to worry about not having the back shielded. So there's that. Now we get on to the big, uh, the big one that I personally love. This thing is my favorite tank thus far. Uh, the turret looks very familiar if you don't remember. It's uh, the same as the obelisk turret, which is the actual designation of this tank. So the obelisk. Oh, oh darn it. Uh, let me fix that real quick just in case it changes it in the background because I don't want that to happen. All right. So I basically took the same turret, put it on uh, an extended hull, fit three... 293 millimeter shells up in uh, ta uh, tank guns up in the front and then I put another two of those in the back. These guns aren't meant to be very accurate as you can see 1.06 uh, degrees dispersion. Uh, they're not overly accurate. Um, this gun is but these things are meant to be if an enemy gets up nice and close these things will just blast it in the face and considering this is delivering a uh, 293 millimeter high explosive shell these things do insane amounts of damage to even armored vehicles like if i put this thing up against that from the front it would probably just eradicate the front of the hull so this is a force to be reckoned with uh fully rotatable turret and uh actually can do about i think it maxed out at about 40 meters a second so this thing is actually faster than the much lighter vehicles this thing has a mass of 1095.44, I'm guessing, kilograms. This game doesn't have the unit for that. This vehicle is only 778. So, as you can see, this is a very large vehicle compared to the others. If we just zoom out a little bit, it's more or less the double of any of these vehicles. And if we look at the internals, I'm actually really proud of this vehicle. Uh, barely under the volume limit so if we go ahead and look in here as you can see these uh, guns are very tightly packed in the armor just because uh, again these are very very explosive ammo racks so when these things go up it's very bad so they're hidden behind very very thick armor and I've only ever seen these things go off once so I don't, I don't really worry about these, and this tank just gets right into the middle of the combat, so it, it actually does pretty well for its, uh, its role. We've got, again, just a large amount of small engines just tucked around in here, a uh, large amount of resource storage. Then we've got our two ammunition types, so for the 293 millimeter, we have uh, just mostly HE and then a composite head at the top, uh, if we actually put this up where it's supposed to be as you can see it has a pretty pathetic muzzle velocity but then again these things aren't supposed to be shooting very far it does about 3,305 uh, kinetic damage doesn't really have armor piercing values explosive damage is 4,068 but this is the important part the 20 meter explosive radius so this thing will basically vaporize anything in its explosive radius and uh, it does really well. And then for the main turret, we have uh, just a armor piercing uh, shell. So this thing will do its job reasonably well. 
uh, uh, in here in the back we have uh, two more of the guns these ones aren't as well protected but uh, technically speaking enemies really shouldn't be getting behind this thing and if they do they die immediately so it's all right uh, we've got a separate ai for these ones in the back so that way they won't be trying to target the things in the front which wouldn't make any sense uh, we've got our ammunition tucked nice and neatly in the far as far back as we can possibly get it without it having like on top of these guns which would just be devastating if it went off uh, packed away in some heavy armor and that's basically this this tank itself I, I love this thing it just does its job well uh, it just is hard to kill I've had this thing going up against like five six enemies by itself and it just destroys them um, I don't know why this one moved. All right, on to the next thing. Uh, this isn't really a tank, but uh, this is the, it's the main backbone of my, uh, well, would-be uh, campaign. So this is basically just a resource transporter. It's got a pathetic little AI stuck in the front driving, so I can actually use this thing uh, to drive and capture vehicles. Uh, I've just got aesthetic uh, smoke stuff. I designed it to be more like a half track, hence the uh, half track r resource transport vehicle. And then in here in the back, we just got some repair tentacles, a large amount of uh, material storage. We've got a pathetic little engine in here that's 600 horsepower. And then I kind of cheated and I put one of these in just because I, I cheat. And then we've got some fuel. And that's basically it for this. It doesn't go very fast, but it does its job. It stores a lot of you know resources and I'm happy with it and now on to the uh, the final vehicle in the selection and the most re recent I finished this one this afternoon this is the uh, MAA PZ1 8.8 centimeter six barrel turret so this is the motorized anti-aircraft Panzer 1 hull it's got an 88 centimeter an 88 millimeter if it was an 80 centimeter that'd be kind of crazy uh gun and uh it has a six barrel turret so this thing is not well the front of it is reasonably well armored because it's the same hull uh and it's more or less a hollowed out uh one of these vehicles so the pensacola it's basically one of those hollowed out and just have this massive turret stuck on the uh the top of it now the turret is what defines this vehicle it has basically no armor on it just to keep it as light as possible all the armor is focused in the front with some beams along the side and nothing in the rear uh, this thing if penetrated will go up in flames but luckily considering it's not actually inside the vehicle at all it will um, it will hopefully not detonate the in internals of this vehicle and keep it mostly functional even though it's basically weaponless so we've got a, just a crap ton of auto loaders in here with a bunch of ammunition just to keep this thing firing as much as possible and uh the actual ammunition has an 875 meter a second uh velocity i purposefully made it this high so that way it can just shoot down aircraft and it works especially well when there are two or three of these out on the battlefield because they just destroy everything so it's an 88 millimeter gun so i'm taking uh hints from the germans here and using a good uh, 88 millimeter anti-aircraft gun the accuracy is the best out of all of these vehicles oh, 0 0.7 0 0.171 degrees dispersion so this thing will basically hit uh anything within its firing range which is about 3,000 meters uh, so in here we just got a bunch of gauge coolers uh, recoil absorbers and then up here on top we have our uh, detection thing I just used this uh, again I really haven't had a whole lot of experience with these detection this de detection equipment just in general because well, it was recently added, and I'm still trying to work out how exactly it works. So that is basically my tank fleet. Uh, so far, the only ones I've really had any work with, uh, resulting in just 
moderate success in uh, just fights in general is the uh, the LAT. Uh, so basically, this. Oh, sorry, never mind. I'm not gonna bother fixing that. Uh, this tank and this tank. I've started using this one as well, but I'm still kind of trying to work this one out, uh, making it so it functions the way it's supposed to. And I've also worked with this one a little bit. But you're probably all here to just kind of see me blow some stuff up. So we're gonna turn on the combat and we're going to spawn in you know what, we're gonna spawn in a land marauder. So this is the uh, the, f the boss to the Dustwind Gypsies in the campaign. We're gonna spawn that in. And we're just going to have just destruction. <coughs> so I have the strongest suspicion this vehicle's just gonna spaz out because it's not supposed to be this close. And we're already getting some friendly fire. Oh, nope, it fired. And there goes that shell. Um, this appears to have taken quite a, a hit, but appears to be mostly functional. Uh, we've already taken off a large part of the land marauder. Circling around. As you can see, very neatly contained explosion. One of the guns went off, detonated, but as you can see, it was mostly contained within the box it was stored, so the tank is able to still function. <coughs> Look at our little anti-aircraft guy get this. Look, look at what this this gun actually when at uh, lightly armored tanks is reasonably uh, good just because it's got vibration on these shells just because they've got such a high velocity and that's that's it we've we've defeated it and our half track is tipped over on his side completely in effect oh oh well i mean that's one way of solving it you just got an extra you know three four meters of armor in the front that's that's good that's good so anyway uh i'd like to thank you guys for watching and uh let me know if you guys are interested in me doing some sort of uh from the depths campaign uh i probably will anyway whether you guys you know say anything or not but uh you know helps to helps to see if there's any kind of I don't know, backing to it. So, I'll see you guys next time. Take care.